Hi guys, we are gonna have a video about pressure, and part of that is gonna be air pressure. Pretty sure you guys talked about this last year in Earth Science, but we're going to go through it just in case you need a reminder. So how do we have an atmosphere? Well, the atmosphere has to do with how much gravity a planet has, and the smaller planets have less gravity. The larger planets have more gravity. And the air pressure is going to depend on how much gas there is. So the stronger the gravity, the more gas is going to be held to the planet, and the greater the weight of the atmospheric pressure on any point. So what about Earth? Well, Earth's atmosphere is about 10 kilometers thick. It consists of mostly nitrogen and oxygen. So one thing that we talked about a couple packets ago is that air is made up of molecules. You can feel it when the wind blows, so air is definitely matter. Gravity is going to pull those air molecules towards the Earth, and that's going to give them weight. And the weight of the air molecules is called air pressure. <coughs> so why do we talk about air pressure being different at different spots? So if you're high up in, on a mountain, your high altitudes are going to have lower pressure because there's going to be less particles pushing down on you. Now if you move down here, look at all the particles pushing down on you. So low altitudes have a higher pressure. So let's talk about gas pressure. Gas pressure is going to be, depend on the density and the temperature. So if you add more gas, that's going to increase the density of the gas, and that's going to be a higher pressure. Also, if you heat something up, heat a gas up, it's going to increase the pressure because the particles are going to be moving faster. So air pressure is going to be equal in all directions, so all the parts of our body are feeling air pressure right now. Just one more time, so as the elevation goes up, the barometric pressure goes down. And it's an inverse relationship, and the reason is, is because there's less gas particles pushing on you. This is how we tell um, pressure, it's a barometer. This guy is the first guy to invent a barometer. And the way it worked, it was a bowl of mercury, and you had a tube, a glass column, submerged in there. And <clears throat> the pressure of the air molecules would push the mercury up the tube as the air pressure increased, or down if it decreased the weight of the mercury in the tube was going to be equal to the air pushing down, the air pressure. So as atmospheric pressure increases, the mercury in the tube rose. Um, so there was good and bad things about this barometer. The good things were it was easy to construct, it was really accurate, but the bad thing is it's really breakable and also mercury is very toxic. So then came the aneroid barometer. So we don't have any fragile tubes, we don't have any toxic chemicals, we don't need batteries, we don't need to wind it. And in an android barometer, it uses a cell which has had most of the air removed. As the air pressure around the cell increases, it presses on the cell which causes the needle to move. So on TV they usually give us our pressure in inches of mercury. But most meteorologists would actually measure it in millibars. So guys, this is really important one more time. So you can see here, as the altitude goes up, the pressure is, goes down, okay? So what about changing pressure? What does that really mean for us? So if you have a rise in barometric pressure, that means that it increases air pressure. And that's usually gonna mean that there's a high pressure system approaching, which is going to mean fair weather, clear skies. And a falling barometer is gonna mean a decrease in air pressure. And that's usually gonna mean that we have a low pressure system coming, and that's when we get storms and tornadoes and hurricanes and stuff like that. 